When a bank advertises its rate, if someone says, I'm going to pay 8% compounded semi-annually, and some other bank says, I'm going to pay 8% compounded quarterly, it's really easy to tell which one's going to pay us more interest, isn't it? Same nominal rate, same annual rate, but this one compounds more often, doesn't it? So this one's going to pay more interest. Now, what if they both compounded semi-annually and this was 8% and this was 7%? Which would be the better bank? It'd be the 8, wouldn't it? But what if this one's 8% compounded semi-annually and this one's 7.9% compounded quarterly? Now we can't tell by looking, can we? So, there is a law that says anybody who pays interest has to state the annual percentage yield. They can say we pay 8% compound semi-annually, but they have to say, parentheses, this much is what you're actually earning in a year. Okay? And that way we can compare which bank pays more. So, here's how we find annual percentage yield. It's the real rate of interest that's being paid in compound interest. Annual percentage yield. Let's use the example we just did. What if someone says, find the annual percentage yield if someone sticks $1,000 in the bank at 8% for three years compounded semi-annually. What rate are they actually earning? First of all, do you think it's going to be less, the same, or more than 8%? It should be more, right? Because we're compounding it. If it were just simple interest, it'd be flat 8%, but remember, we're going to earn interest on the interest, so it should be a little more than 8%. Now, here's one key to working these problems. What does annual mean? It means yearly. It means once a year. In other words, if they tell you three years in the problem, don't, put, don't use that. They're, we're only interested in how much do they earn in one year. So time is always one year when you're doing an APY problem. Time is always one year. We're interested how much do you earn in one year. Secondly, the way the book says to do it is figure out your N and I, and that is correct. We do have to figure that out. Let's figure out N and I. N would be time in years times the number of times we compound. How many years are we talking about if we're trying to figure out an annual percentage yield? One year. And how often are we compounding? Semi-annually, twice a year. So we're looking at two periods, okay? Big N is two in this case, not six. Now, little i, notice it doesn't have anything about time in it. It's going to be the same, isn't it? We're still going to earn 4% each time we compound if we're compounding twice a year because the, the rate per period doesn't depend on the length of time. So this is going to be 4%. Armed with N and I, we can go to the table and find our table factor. So, let's go to the table that says future value of a dollar at compound interest. What's our N? Two. And what's our I? Four percent. And what's our table factor? One point oh eight one two six six. <laughs> six. And that's probably what you said. I just didn't hear right. Does everybody get that for the table factor? With N being two and I being four percent? Now the book says let's multiply this by a thousand, see what their maturity value is, subtract a thousand from it see how much interest they earned, then say what percent was that, divide it by a thousand, see what percent it is. That's like one of those magic tricks. <laughs> Multiply this thing by a thousand, then subtract that, then subtract that number, subtract a thousand from that number, then divide the answer by a thousand. That thousand didn't have anything to do with anything. 
Here's, here's the secret. Just let your present value be a dollar. Okay? Here's our future value of a dollar. Here's our present value. How much did we earn? We earned that much, a little over eight cents. We divide it by one and it stays the same. In other words, that decimal part is the APY. That's the APY. That's how much we actually earned on a dollar. We earned, and then we change it to a percent. So when we move it two, per, two places over, we were actually earning 8.16%. Now, what if we compounded it quarterly? If a bank paid 8% compounded quarterly, see, we really don't care about the present value, and time is always one year. So how many periods are we talking about? One year quarterly, that's four. What percent would we earn each time if we're earning 8% a year and we're doing it four times? We'd earn 2%, wouldn't we? N times I always has to equal R when you're talking about one year. N times I equals R, 8%. N times I equals R, 8%. So let's look up four periods at 2% each time. Would we anticipate that being more or less than this? Should be more, because it's the same interest rate, but we're compounding it more often. And sure enough, with four and two, we get 1.08, what? Two, four. So we're actually earning 8.24% interest. That's our APY over here. Not a big difference, but it's significant. And the longer you leave it there, the more significant it gets. And the more you invest, the more significant it is. So that's how you do APY. Just let time be one year. Find N and I. Find your table factor and just peel off the decimal part and turn it into a percent. That's your APY.